Aren't these magnolia trees fantastic? But have a look at the flower. This flower size of the magnolia is wonderful. It's really wide, it's got large petals, and in the interior you've got lots of stamens. And all of these are great adaptations to make pollination easier. Because the pollination of magnolias, way back in evolutionary times, was done by beetles and moths. These plants are so old on the evolutionary scale of things, they predate roses and all sorts of things. They actually predate bees. They are fascinating plants. A magnolia needs morning sun and afternoon shade. They don't like heat. What kind of soil do the magnolias like? Magnolias prefer slightly acidic, yeah. well drained and not waterlogged soil and plenty of humus. For here we use a slow release general purpose fertiliser every three months, half a handful, yeah. spread it like you're feeding your chalk. This mulch pile looks like it's got a job to do. Mulch is really important for the uh, magnolia trees. Yeah. Keeps the roots cool, adds to the organic matter in the soil, helps us with nutrient uptake, yeah. and it also keeps the weeds away. Now magnolias can take a bit of pruning, can't they? They certainly can. We look for formative pruning. Meaning what? That you... The overall shape and structure of the, of the main, main structure of, yes. the, of the plant. Yeah. Then we look for any cross limbs, yeah. so they don't rub and clash with each other, and any dead wood. Okay. And the next branch we do, Jane, is again because it's crossed over. Yep. It'll be this one here because it's going through and crossing all this main yep. limb here. Perfect. Okay. That's the job done. That's pretty simple. Anything else? Just give them plenty of space. Yeah. They are a specimen tree and give them plenty of water in the summer. Magnolificent. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't meant to laugh. <laughs> The magnolias are at their peak at the moment in the Dandenong Ranges and I'm taking a tour of some terrific specimens in the National Rhododendron Gardens with team leader Mark Krauss. Wow, Mark, that is a doozy. That's, that's the pride <laughs> of the display here. Isn't that extraordinary? And it's, it's Magnolia vecchii, vecchii, which is a cross, isn't it? It's a cross between the Magnolia Campbelli yep. and the Magnolia denudata. That's right. So you get uh, the two together and it's created a beautiful specimen. That would be an original planting. Would it? Back to 1962. Yeah. And it's flowering more on that side. Why is that? Do you think there's a bit more light getting in? Well, or you've got a dark forest on the right hand side. Yeah. You've got all the light and sunshine on the lake side. So more flowers develop on the light side. When we were young, my mother would say, come on, we're all going up to the Nandinongs, to the Rhododendron Gardens, and she'd bung us in the car and dog and everything, and we'd be sitting there, what are we going up there for? She wanted to come and see that Magnolia Denudata. Well, she was a good lady. She was, she was a good gardener. <laughs> she knew, knew where to come. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there we go, the old ones that everyone loves in their gardens, the Solangianas. That's the classic magnolia yeah, shape. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Just that lovely cup shape and pink and a little bit of white, it's lovely. My grandfather grew one in his front garden. Exactly. And you still see them, they're still good as gold, aren't they? Yeah. 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 No, they've just that's... got a beautiful uh, shape of flower. That's right. And very few pests and diseases, they're, they're a good plant. They're a good standby. Yeah. I love the way how magnolias have their flowers prior to the leaves coming on the branches. It makes them outstanding, doesn't it? It's quite unique, Jane. Mm. This is Felix, mm. uh, a New Zealand cultivar. Uh, great colours, big petals, 
big open flare is the one that everyone wants a photo with. I can imagine them all stopping going, whoa, my goodness, great. it's a wonderful colour. But there's one over there that is similar colour. Yes, and that's Vulcan. Yeah. And Vulcan's probably an early cultivar. It started interest back in people buying magnolias. Yeah. People all knew about the early ones, but the colours of the, of the new varieties what made the difference. So it's really reinvigorated sort of people's interest in magnolias, these new colours. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. And I think that was bred in New Zealand, wasn't it? Yep. Yes, All of the yep. newer ones were New Zealand cultivars. I think there's around 80 species of magnolias and there's innumerable cultivars and you've got a lot of them in this area. They're all in this area and there's just so much colour. Oh, it's beautiful. This one, I, I take my fancy to this one. I read the name, was it Tina Durio? That's right. It's yeah. one of my favourites. Yeah. It has a real classic tight shape and beautiful white colour. This is why I think magnolias are elegant. That looks like a goblet standing straight up and the colour, that is just a beautiful ivory colour, isn't it? That is pristine. Mm. That's a great, great form and mm. uh, I, I'd buy that for my home. How come they do so well? For this garden, Jane, it's the cool climate mm. and, and also our soil. Yeah. Well, you're a little bit colder than Melbourne, aren't you? Because you're quite high. We're about four or five degrees cooler than Melbourne. Yes. And does that explain these little hairs that are on the buds, around the buds? They're protecting them. Well, that's something special for the magnolia. Yeah. That, that sheath protects it in the cold weather, mm. in, the, in the winter. Mm. So the flower forms in the sheath. Yeah. And when the warm weather comes on, it opens up and there's the perfect bud. Yeah. One area of the garden has some very young magnolias. Usually the magnolia doesn't start to flower till it's reached about the year three. Okay. So then they start to develop flowers in, in a much greater scale. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And why have you got the cages? Uh, this is, uh, we have a few pest problems here. We've got uh, deer, that reach up to about this height. Ah, oh, what, and that's actually broken that that's off? A, that deer, deer has um, mm. been into that. Uh, wallabies reach to about this height. Yeah. Uh, then we have uh, parrots that have a go at the flowers. What, nip the buds they off? They nip the buds off. Oh, there's big problems with country gardens, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Now, these trees look pretty old. These are one of the early plantings way back in the early 60s. Yeah. I think this one, well, what do you reckon it is? Well, I reckon that's a Magnolia Campbelli. Yes, because of the size of the flowers. And there's a little bit of a scent. Yes, You yeah. can smell that. Yeah, difficult to know, but it's, yeah. a, it's a really good Magnolia, yeah, isn't great it? great specimen. Mm -hmm. 